Well, good morning on this winter's morning. Welcome as a Chunga Uniting Church gathered in our homes and lounge rooms and beyond. I greet you in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is everlasting. Let's worship Him. Amen. There are so many attributes to God and who He is. He is a Father. He is everlasting. He is the Creator. He is the Son who came to earth as one of us. And He's the Spirit who lives in us. He's a comforter. He's a provider. Uh, those, uh, these songs and these words just uh, can only capture some of who He is, whom we worship today. So let's gather and give thanks. Will you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, you are everlasting. You are far bigger and greater than we will ever comprehend. But we thank you for who you are and for allowing us to catch some glimpse of you. That we are listening here this morning, encouraged by others and encouraged in freedom to gather and be reminded of who you are. We thank you that we can learn and grow and and leave today from here empowered for our week ahead. We thank you for this season. We thank you for your protection and your hand upon us. We thank you for the the miracles, big and small, that we experience day by day, many that we go unnoticed. We thank you for the gift of your Son. As we gather today, we confess our sin. We lay down before you our thoughts and actions, 
or those that we've omitted to do as we've disobeyed you. We're sorry. We lay those down. We claim the blood of Jesus to wash over all our sin and we thank you that we are forgiven and free. We lay down our lives before you today as an act of worship. We lay down our offerings that we've given this week and pray that you'd use that to further your kingdom. Give wisdom to those who spend it. As we gather today, we offer our all to you, our great everlasting God. Amen. Let's share in a few notices to remind us what's going on in the life of the church this week. Our socially distanced craft and cards group was back in action in Wandine this week. All are welcome. If your group would like to consider using the facilities, please contact myself or a church council member. If you are not sharing this morning with others in your home, join us after the service to connect over Zoom. Use a link from the email sent this week or it will also be posted in a live chat. Every week a list of prayer requests is sent to a group who pray on your behalf. If you have a request, click the button at the bottom of the church online window or you can contact us via email. Head to our website to subscribe to our newsletter. Find weekly children's activities account details for online giving. Previous online services, contact details and more. Hi families. I hope you've all been enjoying or at least surviving the school holidays the past two weeks. I've dropped off some holiday activity packs for the kids and if you haven't received one of these and you would like to, please let me know and I can arrange to have one of them dropped off to you. Um, and if you know of anyone else that would appreciate some holiday activities for the last few days, again, just let me know and I can organize for this to be dropped off. Uh, so going forward into term three, we're going to continue the Sway pages online for the kids. On this page, we have some songs and also a lesson each week and some activities to do. So if you haven't had a chance already, check out this page. The link for our Sway page can be found on our Echungi Uniting Church website or can also be found by using the weekly email updates. For youth this term, we're going to be um, looking at going along to some of the other youth groups that have started up. So week one, uh, term three, we're going to be going along to Influences at Cornerstone in Mount Barker. And we're going to first meet at Wandine and we'll be leaving there at quarter to seven and we'll be back by nine o'clock. So if you'd like to come along, please let me know. Um, and also if you need a lift, we can pick you up along the way and organise to drop you home. Um, and so also if you could just keep an eye out on our weekly updates for any other children's activities and children's updates, that would be great. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> G'day, I'm Colin, and I'm uh, looking at some old photos of me. And uh, one thing I'll say for sure, I've changed. I really have. And you've probably changed too. And have a look at this. This is a photo of me with my mum. And there I am, a tiny little baby. Then you get a bit bigger. I've got another photo here. This is me, a bit bigger. We are on holidays there, and that's with my dad. I could feed myself, I was a bit bigger then. I might have sat down, read books and played. And then I got bigger again. This photo was taken when I went to school. I was big enough for school in that photo. I'm not in my uniform, I'm still in my pajamas. And there's another photo here, I've changed even more. Do you think I have? <laughs> I, I've changed, have you changed too? I'm sure you have, like when you get clothes out and they don't fit anymore because you've got bigger. But you know, we don't just change on the outside, we change on the inside as well because some days are good days and then some days mm, are bad days. And sometimes our friends change too, don't they? Like maybe we don't get on with friends like we used to. Hmm. And things change around us. 
Maybe you've moved house or even had to move to another country. What else changes? Hmm, maybe when someone you love gets sick or has to move away or you can't see them. So many changes. But there's someone who never changes. Do you know who that is? I think you might. All right, I'm going to read a verse from the Bible. It's from Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, I am the Lord and I do not change. God doesn't change. God wasn't small once and now he's big. God doesn't grow. God doesn't change his mind. God doesn't learn anything. He doesn't get old or die. He doesn't have mm, good days, mm, bad days. The Lord never changes. And because God doesn't change, all he does is good. When he makes a plan, he keeps his plan. And you know what? The Bible says something about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesus doesn't change. Everything else changes. We change and our friends change and the world around us changes. But Jesus never changes. And when it feels like, oh, too much has changed. Everything's different. Remember this. When you are scared, when you are sad, trust God. When you've done something that is bad, trust God. Just think a prayer and he will hear. God always cares. He's always near. His love will never disappear. Trust God. Right. I want to sing a song about how God never changes. Let me see. It's uh, from Malachi. Remember that verse? Chapter 3, verse 6. I am the Lord and I do not change. All right. Got my plectrum. Got the song. All right. Here we go. <laughs> change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall that the Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. God chose Israel long and long ago. And when Israel sinned, God never let them to him. Ready? I am the Lord and I do not change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall that the Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. There are times we feel like we could walk on air, but when that feeling's gone, God's love will still be there. Listen to him. I am the Lord and I do not change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, but the Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. He keeps every promise and his word is true. What he is, he says, and what he says, he'll do. Ready? Listen to him. I am the Lord and I do not change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. The Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change see kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall he wisely wonderfully holds them all blessed are all who on him call because the lord don't change at all he 
doesn't change. All right, I think it's time for us to pray. I'll close my eyes. You can close them too to help us think about what we're, what we're saying as we talk to God. Let's pray. Almighty God, how amazing you are. Your word says you have no beginning and you have no end and you do not change. We praise you because we are weak. We see change all around us. We see ourselves change on the outside and the inside. But you are always the same. So we call on you, our rock and our deliverer. And Lord Jesus, we praise you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever, no matter what. And we pray these things in our Saviour, Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Well, I think that's enough of the photos. So uh, finish up there. No, can we have no more, no more photos? Hey, I said no more photos of me when I changed, all right? No more, no more, please. Whoa. That, <laughs> can we stop? No more, no more photos. Thanks, Colin. Well, on this new day, as the sun comes up, as we look to what is ahead, let's lift our souls and our hearts to him. Will you join me as we sing? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing. Your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His
It does our soul good to sing and to be reminded of the hope that we have. Well, who would have thought that we're here again as we look around the world and interstate? Uh, things are constantly changing. And so let's bring to God the needs of our world and each other that are on our hearts in this moment. It may be that you can think of those who are sick at the moment and need God's healing touch. It may be that there are those who simply need peace in the midst of their circumstances. We can pray for them. We can stand in the gap for them. We have nothing to offer but calling on the one who can make a way and bring life and hope in his way, in his time. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thankful, but aware that many needs that are going on in our world and in our lives, and amongst those that we know that we have no control over. So we come to you knowing that you are unchanging and in control, knowing that you spoke the world into motion, knowing the power that you give us through your Holy Spirit. And so we pray for those in this moment that we know who are sick, whose bodies are not whole. We pray for healing for them. In a moment of silence, we lift them up to you. We pray shalom for them. Father, we pray too shalom, peace for others who are finding themselves in the midst of storms, relationally, in business, in health, in all, all sorts of ways. We pray in a moment of silence for those on our hearts who need your peace. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Bring light to the darkness. We pray that all of those that we're praying for would come to know you and know your loving arms around them. Father, we lift our attention to our wider world. We pray for Victoria. We pray, in fact, for all our government leaders as they continue to make decisions. We pray for wisdom for them. Our state and federal leaders give them wisdom and strength. We pray for those in Victoria. We pray that for healing of those who are sick, for protection and comfort. And we pray that this virus would become under control again and would disappear. We pray for places in the world that are faring far worse. We pray that we'd be free of this virus. Bring people to their knees, draw them to you, to the eternal hope that you offer. Father, we pray for places who are in conflict and turmoil. We pray for your peace. Give wisdom to those leaders who are causing this and where there's greed, we pray that they too would see you and find hope and come to their knees. Bring light to the darkness in our world, Lord. Father, for the other needs on our hearts, in our own lives and in the lives of those around us in our world, in a moment of silence, we just offer you anything as we are together. We join with one another and just thank you for what you're yet to do. To pray for your breakthrough in these circumstances. Thank you, Jesus. We trust in you. Amen. There was once a beautiful grapevine. It may not have been the biggest in the vineyard, but its branches extended far and wide. 
Its leaves provided shelter from the harsh elements. Its fruit was tasty and sweet, and visible to those close to where the branches extended. But then came winter, and this beautiful fruit-filled vine was pruned back. Branches were completely removed. Leaves disappeared. All that remained was the stump of the vine and a couple of remaining sticks, dormant, seemingly lifeless. In some ways, this story reflects the life of our church in recent times. What was now four months ago, can you believe it? The world situation changed and much of the way we expressed ourselves as a Christian community was necessarily pruned back. The ability to gather in person, to sing together, to meet in the building, even to share a cuppa. And like most Australians, well, we accepted what needed to be. And with many churches, we innovated. Out of that grew this online service. Now, it's not the same, we know that, but it has been an attempt to allow for some of the things that were stripped away, to allow some form of connection while we were scattered around songs and scripture and familiar faces that point us back to Jesus Christ and encourage us to stand firm in our faith. Now, the image of the vineyard isn't perfect because there has been fruit in this season. There has been growth. There has been an extension of our branches and our shade far beyond anything we could have reached before. You have remained generous in your giving, in your phone calls, and in many ways, and that's been incredibly encouraging to watch. But for the sake of today, let's see the church and all that we were as having been stripped back to the bare essentials in this season, to the vine and its roots, to Jesus, who we center on and grow from. The great thing about seasons, though, is that seasons change. Change is a part of life, as Colin has reminded us. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. Seasons come and seasons go. And so now we find ourselves in a new season, emerging out of winter towards glorious spring. And as we do, and as we look at our life as a church, Strip back to those essentials. This is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to consider what we'd love us to look like as these new shoots begin to emerge again. What will we look like in summer? What will we hope for? Now in our home, we planted a grapevine and I can tell you what I'm hoping for, fruit. As nice as it'll be to see green leaves along our fence line, what we're really after is the juicy, delicious fruit. Now, as a church, we also wish to see fruit. That's what God wants for us individually. And that's what he wants for his church, which is his bride. Remember, Jesus came to give life and life in its fullness. This is an image of abundance and growth and fruitfulness. Now, individually, we bear fruit as the Holy Spirit lives within us. We know this verse well, Galatians 5. It tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These character traits mean that we are becoming more and more like Jesus. Because fruit-bearing Christians are disciples of Jesus, that is, followers of Jesus as our rabbi. And as our rabbi, as a disciple, we follow in his footsteps, not just to hear what he says, but to live out and do what he says and does. Now, as much as we've loved these online services, and I appreciate that many of you enjoy this, a fruit-bearing Christian does not look like this. 
the kind of fruit that we bear is that we live the radical life that Jesus lived. A countercultural life in our world. A life where we love our enemies, where we forgive, where we see this world as a temporary home and where we throw off everything else that hinders, where we love with no strings attached, willing to give up everything just as Jesus our rabbi did. In our passage from John, he expresses it as he talks of himself. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus went on to do that very thing for you. Jesus was no couch potato. He calls us to live radical lives as his disciples. And he started a lasting revolution among those first disciples who were able to go and live that out. In verse 12, he'd said, My command to you is this, Love each other as I have loved you. And the fruit of following that for those early disciples in the early church was that they continued the work of Jesus, proclaiming the kingdom of God with word and with action, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And as they did, that fruit multiplied. Lives were genuinely transformed and people discovered life in its fullness, both for their moment in living and for their eternity, as they stepped out in faith and believed. So how do we, as a Chunga Uniting Church, grow back into an effective, fruit-bearing vine yet again in this season? How do we be those radical followers of Jesus, disciples who encourage one another to bear fruit and see the power of God at work in and through us? We are in a new season. We are at a turning point. And where we go from here is critical. Hebrews 10 verse 24 and 25 encourages us with this. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Now what I've learned in my limited experience of vineyards is that while we can let the vine grow and its leaves and its fruit will spread everywhere on its own. To do that doesn't necessarily allow for the best productivity. The fruit will ripen inconsistently and makes the harvest a whole lot more difficult for the gardener. Even the ancient Egyptians and the Phoenicians very early on began to develop different training techniques to promote more abundant and fruitful yields in their grapes. Well before Jesus, the ancient Greeks were already staking vines in Italy. Today, it's the use of a trellis. I've got a version of one behind me here today. The trellis allows a vine grower to see their vines bear the greatest fruit for their region. Branches are pruned back and the remaining few are wound onto the trellis in a way that will have the best outcome in the coming seasons. You see, it's the trellis that helps the vine bear the greatest fruit. Now, if we look back at our trellis as a church in previous years, we can see that it was a very full one. We've been a very busy and active church in lots of areas, and for those seasons, we are very thankful. But now, in this new season, as we look to the regrowth that's taking place, it's time to think again about our trellis so that we too can bear the greatest fruit to be most effective in living out our mission. That is, knowing Jesus, go, caring and sharing. For all the things that were before before in our lives as a church, we need to ask ourselves, what fruit 
did that bear? Did it help us to know Jesus, to go caring and sharing? Did it help us live deeper as radical disciples? Did it help us grow spiritually and in faith? Even in our meeting together on a Sunday, were we truly able to encourage each other to spur one another on towards love and good deeds, as Hebrews calls us? Were we able to do that in the most effective way in the old trellis? Now, let's face it, there are limitations to that trellis we had before. And there certainly are to the one that we've temporarily put up now. Back then, we could sit passively in rows and then we could go home. If we wanted to, we could choose to hardly interact with one another. If we did interact, it was often difficult to go very deep on a Sunday morning. Conversations about the sermon and its content might only scratch the surface and it would be unusual to ask a question of each other over a coffee about what we'd been reading this week in the Bible or how we'd seen God at work or who we've shared Jesus with. Questions can uh, be at a certain level. There were limitations to that model. There was fruit, yes. But was our trellis set up to see that fruit in abundance? And now in this season, the season that we've just had, we, we run the risk of getting a little bit too comfortable, dressed in our Ugg boots from home, staying isolated, and ignoring the call to not give up on meeting each other now that we can in some form. Over at least the next four Sundays, we have the opportunity to lean into this idea of a new trellis, although one that is really not so new at all. Coming back to, to what it means to know what we believe, to know what worship truly is, to understand what the church really is and means. And to many of the themes that we've been picking up over the last few months already, we have the opportunity now to start afresh with a new trellis, in some ways similar to that that the early church used as shoots began to emerge for the first time. Even this morning, I know that there are at least five or six homes that have taken in others, including one group meeting today in Wandine. Doing so to take seriously this call to not give up on meeting together now that we can again in some way. Now some of these groups and others that form over the coming weeks may continue to meet together week by week, perhaps even into the future spurring one another on towards the fruit of love and good deeds. As much as we'd love to return to normal, the normal we once knew, as we can see what's happening in Victoria, let alone around the world, it needs to sink in that we may likely never return to exactly the way things were. It's time for us to trust in the wisdom of our church council, to pray for them. It's time for us to consider whether we've been making an idol of a particular form of worship, whether we find ourselves like the people of Israel, setting our eyes back on Egypt instead of on the promised land ahead. It's challenging. But my encouragement to you is to lean into this new season. Together, let's grow into this new trellis and trust God for the abundance and the fruit that is yet to come. Now, for those who continue to self-isolate for health reasons or geography, we will still be offering the opportunity for you to connect over Zoom as a way of meeting together the best we can. For the rest of us, the encouragement is to consider who could we host in our own home over the coming weeks? Or if that's not practical for you, will you accept the invitation to lean into this fresh way of being church in this season? When the invitation comes, will you accept it? 
Well, it is tempting to stay home if we've been enjoy, enjoying this for the last few months. Unless we don't have a choice, our call is to not give up on meeting together. Let's offer God our first fruits, our best, not our leftovers. Let's remain in Jesus, the true vine. And let's remember who we are, his body, interconnected, that we cannot do without each other. We were made for connection. And let's live our lives pleasing God, the gardener, who is the only constant in this changing world. As we see his kingdom come and his will be done. As life and love and fruit in all its abundance flows in and through us in the season to come. I look forward for what God has in store. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you have given us the gift of community and the freedom to gather. We thank you that there are plenty in this, in this church community who are willing to host and that we can connect with them. We pray for those of us who are isolating and those of us who are yet to connect. And we pray that we would be your church and bear great fruit in the season that is to come. Open doors for connection and for gathering. And God, we thank you for uh, the way you will use us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you go this week, you go as the church, scattered and connected, emerging as we stay connected to the vine. May the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Amen. And as we go today, I leave you with this famous prayer, a prayer to guide us.